Good night, everybody. It's uh, it's uh, that time of the week again. It's Open Shutter Live. Uh, we are talking wedding photography tonight. And we have special guest James Lee on, who will be joining us in a couple minutes. So in that time, uh, let's just introduce ourselves and get it going. So, Brian. Brian. Yes. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Brian McGowan. I am Brampton-based photographer, videographer. And uh, excited to, to see what James has to tell us tonight. Uh, just before we get into this, everybody on screen you see right now has a YouTube channel. So uh, if you're not yeah. already subscribed to them, be sure to check them out. Subscribe to their channels for uh, amazing content. Anyway, let's go over to uh, this guy here, Meek. And, uh, hello, 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 hello. My name is uh, Selom. Uh, photography name is Meek Photos. Um, I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited to uh, listen to uh, James and, and learn something. There's always something to learn. So I'm excited to learn today. All right, uh, Paul. Um, yeah, I like I like learning too. Uh, yeah, like Brian said, everyone, if, if this is your first time watching this show, there's James. Hello. Welcome, welcome to the show, James. We need Hello. a... Yeah, we need some sort of music for it, but we don't have music yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I look James doesn't all... have audio. James has no Just, audio? James has no audio. James, can you hear us? This is very embarrassing. He can hear us, but we couldn't hear him. Oh. So <laughs> okay. Just go on introducing yourself while he fixes the problem there, Paul. Um, Technology. Yeah, like Brian said, if this is your first time watching the show, we all YouTube channels, pretty much in photography, and uh, we do other kinds of stuff also, so check us out. And uh, if you're in the Toronto area, I manage a photography meetup group called Get Out Shoot, so things are opening up. We're starting to do actual meetups again, so check us out, getoutshoot.com, and there's one Saturday, so if you're around Saturday morning, uh, check it out, getoutshoot.com for all the information, and uh, you can meet some cool people, like... Uh, us here on the screen, except for Meeks, because he's in Texas, so he can't really make the meetup. <laughs> I'll be at the One day, up. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Subscribe. And also like this video and follow us on uh, Instagram, Open Shutter YouTube. Yes. Yes. Evans. All right, guys. Welcome. Um, I'm Evans, based in Brampton, Ontario. Um, a wedding photographer, videographer, shoot everything else for fun. Um, it's a good time to talk about weddings because I'm having shooting my first wedding in a long time this Saturday. So it's good to have different opinions, learn something new, have a refresher of what it is like to shoot a wedding. Because, I mean, in Ontario, we haven't been able to uh, head out or even do proper weddings in over almost two years. So yeah, it's man. interesting times. Um, yeah. Very interested to learn and, and see what's going on there. Don't forget, check out our YouTube channels, right? Uh, don't forget to like, comment, like, right? Um, the video, the stream. <laughs> At least right? like, because it takes like half a second. Yep. <laughs> but don't keep your thumbprint, you know. There's yeah, no yeah, use yeah. After, the, yeah. after the video, just. Yeah, we need to please content. the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> but don't keep your thumbprint. So tonight we have James Lee who uh, has shot lots and lots of weddings and uh, he's been kind enough to join us tonight and share some of his wisdom with us. So, uh, James. Thanks, James. Oh. Oh, he's, oh no. Oh no. We can't hear you, James. Technology is great. I love it. I love being live. It's the best. <laughs> um, did he already like leave and come back? Yeah. Okay. yeah like, so, somebody uh, walking through the um, hit the settings button and check your um, audio, and then check your microphone yeah. and just make sure you s it's the correct one is selected because usually it selects yeah. uh, the default one. Oh, 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 he dropped again. He's going to so jump out and jump back in. Um, well, this is this is going as planned because we yeah. have another special guest lined up. No, I'm just joking. We don't have anybody. Else. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, well, hey, maybe, so in the hey, meantime, Jim. so in the meantime, who of us have actually shot weddings? I, have, I, have I just shot one last week for real. Yep, I've shot. Um, well, I usually shoot. Shot, Evans. Shoot, I shoot between 
10 to 15 weddings a year. That's nice. Solid, cool. man. <laughs> nice. It's pretty solid. Well, stuff for this COVID time. <laughs> uh, yeah. At least in the last two years, I think I've only shot maybe five since COVID came up. So, mm. 2019, yeah, like 2019, I shot uh, about 19. 2020, I shot two. <laughs> So yeah, 2021. I've only shot one so far. So yeah, right, I feel some loop too, though. Hey, can you hear us? Can you... I can hear you. Can you hear oh, me? Oh yeah, there we go. Woo! Yes, we have sound. There we I go. To use the uh, magic computer unplug and restart about That's 500 it. times, and you know. That's it. That's how it works. works. Sorry about that, guys. No, no worries. No, it happens. happens every week. You know, in my day job, I work in IT, so I have absolutely <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on so um we're going to talk some wedding photography today yes yeah, we are fun, man. all right excellent so i guess i i guess you probably want to know a little bit about me and and uh, how you got this whack wackadoodle weird guy to come on your show with absolutely you know puzzling qualifications and that sort of thing so that's, that's how we all got on the show that's man. how we all got here yeah well <laughs> yeah. I guess, exactly um so i'll tell you tell you a little bit about myself I, i've been shooting for a long time um, I probably picked up my first real camera when I was 12. It was an old film camera, a Russian Zenit E, for those that might know. Mm -hmm. um, and those that, uh, that, that do know me a little bit, um, I am into shooting a lot of film today, but we're here to talk about wedding photography. So um, I probably shot, uh, gosh, at least 400 weddings in my career, if not more. Um, so, you know, I've, I've seen a lot. I certainly haven't seen it all, but I have some pretty crazy stories and situations that hopefully I can share some insights with you guys. Uh, so I've, I've, as far as photography goes, I, uh, I've completed the commercial photography program at Sheridan College, which I actually went on to be a wedding um, instructor uh, for quite a few years. So uh, I used to teach wedding photography um, and, uh, uh, you know, kind of stopped doing that when I had a kid. Uh, but I, I guess I should say when my wife had a kid, because that's the way she would put it. Um, so I've uh, been doing that for quite a quite a bit of time. Used to run quite a few uh, in, independent, my own independent uh, wedding workshops for uh, people trying to learn uh, the craft of wedding photography. Uh, and certainly, obviously, at the college level. And um, just I've uh, been teaching and uh, practicing photography for for quite some time so you know I'm here to hopefully answer any questions that you guys might have with respect to wedding photography and uh, uh, you know before I before I answer anything I just want to preface it by saying look I'm not going to tell you the right way I'm going to tell you my way uh, it may or may not work for you um, but it did work for me and uh, you know the, as far as you know teaching photography one of my philosophies is that i have as much to teach as i do to learn so i mm -hmm. hope to learn a few things from from you folks and every anyone in the audience that might have a question uh you know because photography is a very dynamic art form in my opinion it's really a mix of uh of art and science together and then especially when you're a people photographer there's that sort of unknown variable because you never know who you're going to get in front of your lens when you shoot people and when you do it for money uh so it, it can be a very um uh if you're a glutton for punishment the wedding photography is for you <laughs> i love it yeah yeah so you know what the way i i sort of my i guess sort of general perspective on wedding photography and i do consider it um as far as professional photography goes, the most difficult um, genre of professional photography one could ever uh, uh, hope to do. Uh, and the reason is, is quite simple, because it, it encompasses all of the genres of photography. It encompasses architectural photography, product photography, people in portraiture, rep reportage, uh, photojournalism, all of those things, It you know, and, and you have to accomplish all of this stuff in a very uh, uncontrolled situation. So it's not like you're in a studio where you've got all your strobes and you got your lighting, you got your scrims, you got everything you need. You don't have to worry about weather. It's air conditioned. There's a washroom, you know, there's a fridge with beers and snacks, there's coffee, in it. The coffee, coffee, whatever you need. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, wedding photography is, um, 
it is a grueling, grueling, grueling job. Um, and you know, I, I don't recommend people do it forever because you will burn out uh, doing it. Yeah. So, do you yeah. guys want? Do you have questions for me, or how do you guys want to sort of? Lots do of it? questions. Yeah. Okay. Tons of questions. I'll, I'll leave it to Andre to kind of manage it. What? Okay. Now, what got you into weddings? Uh, what drew you into weddings? Uh, well. The way, what drew me into weddings is primarily my passion for photography is um, was people photography. So I really mm -hmm. enjoyed per portraiture. Um, and when I was in high school, um, you know, shooting portraits, uh, I said I learned photography initially in high school, like sort of formally learned it. That was my first step. And um, uh, look, I'll be honest with you. You know, it's probably somewhat sexist in today's <laughs> in today's world, but. Uh, you got to meet all the good looking girls if you, you know, ask them to model for you and that sort of thing. And so, uh, hey, you know, what can I say? I was uh, a young boy full of hormones, uh, but that was kind of my initial sort of attraction to the art. I really enjoyed um, shooting people and uh, emotion and that sort of thing. So I was sort of, I guess, naturally drawn uh, towards the emotion in people in photography. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we, as we probably discuss further, but I really think emotion, you know, it's what I call sort of the E cubed or E four sort of philosophy that I have. And it's endeavor to evoke emotion every time the four E's and that regardless of whether or not it's your wedding photography, portraiture, architecture, landscape, whatever it might be, Photography is a visual art form, and like any visual art form, the real magic of it, in my opinion, is how it makes people feel. And this really draws a very, very strong parallel, in my opinion, when it comes to wedding photography, because most couples, most brides in particular, uh, and parents are not going to remember so much the quality of the photograph. But what I'm trying to do is when they open up that album, I want them to remember how they felt, mm. how they mm -hmm. felt that day. So, yeah. you know, it's incumbent if you want to be a successful wedding photographer, it's really, really important that you are creating memories when you're shooting. So having a discussion with your camera is a strict no-no. Do never, ever, ever talk to the camera because the camera, you know, you talk to your subject. You don't talk to the camera. It's when you're shooting people, you have to instill as much confidence in the subject that you have, and they can see right through that. You know, it's like a teacher on the first day of school, never let them see you sweat because, you know, they can smell fear, you know, and then you, you that, that fear that the subject feels or the, or your unsureness comes across uh, with your subject. So it's really, really important, um, you know, that you really do, you know, that you're prepared and that you know what you're talking about. You can exude that confidence and be able to tell that couple, that bride, how amazing they look, what a, what a fantastic job they're doing. Because, you know, frankly, you want them to exude the same level of confidence in those photos. And if they're feeling unsure, if they're feeling a little bit, um, you know, insecure, or anxious or that sort of thing, because they're let's face it, you're not shooting professional models when it comes to wedding photography. Every time they open up that album, that is the feeling that's gonna hit them first. So you want that feeling of confidence of, I looked beautiful that day. I looked handsome that day. My wedding was the best day of my life. It was such a great memory. You have to be part of that emotion of the day. So you really have to make your sessions in wedding photography really about you and the couple and that dynamic and that conversation that you're having, because that is the memory that needs to come back when they open up that album, be it a year later on their anniversary, when their first kid is born, on the fifth birthday, it, you know, God forbid, you know, and it happens to everyone, but there's a death in the family, a parent passes away. All of those memories are wrapped up in that wedding album. That's a great point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have, yeah, I mean, do you have, any, do you have any like, favorite uh, photos that you've taken over, like, over the years? Um, yeah, I mean, I have quite a few, you know, favorites, I guess. Uh, yeah. there's, they're hanging on my on my wall here, so I'll try not to unplug the camera this time. <laughs> but uh, that, that yeah. was a fun one. Uh, that was um, that was taken probably some around 2008, 2009, or maybe before, actually, 2006. 
Uh, that was at, uh, at uh, using just available light uh, at Remy's um, uh, Remy's bar in uh, in Yorkville in in Toronto. Mm, right. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I, yeah. Thank you. I, I uh, you know, I have a lot of sort of favorite. I, don't, I wouldn't say that I have like a top ten. You know, and for me too, like a, a lot of my favorite wedding shots um, aren't ne aren't necessarily sort of the reason that they're my favorites aren't necessarily because of the quality of the image per se or the composition or the technical aspects. It's the fun that I was, was also having with the couple, right? Yeah. So, you know, and I really believe like <laughs> shooting people is not about pressing the button. Right. It's not about yeah. settings. It's not about exposure. I mean, it is like, you know, all of those technical aspects, obviously you have to, you have to nail those, you, you, you know, you have to be instinctive at, you know, reading light and understanding light and all that sort of thing. And, and, and posing, and I'll talk a little bit about posing versus not posing. Um, but at the end of the day, the art of people photography, which is essentially wedding photography is the art of conversation. Hmm. You know, it's about having a conversation with your subject. It's about knowing how to evoke emotion out of them, how to bring back a memory. And do you want that to be it? And it can be a sad memory. It could be, you know, remember your, you know, like, and it's very important, you know, to, to get to know your clients as well, because there might just be a recent passing of someone, but mm -hmm. you can really present that in a positive way you know, and get that emotion because, you know, like, let's say a, a dad passed away or a mom passed away or something like that. And particularly a dad when it comes to a bride, because the dad mm -hmm. is not walking the daughter down the aisle, but you can suggest things like, you know, have her hold a portrait of her dad, just as she's sitting in the vestibule uh, mm -hmm. in the church and say, listen, think about your, you know, and don't even say think about your dad, but you know, I want you to know, that your dad is with you right now. Mm -hmm. You know, he is here and he is he is not leaving at the end of this ceremony. He's gonna be with you for the rest of your life. And then you start taking pictures of that emotion and that reaction mm -hmm. and just let her be, let her be in that moment. Let her shut off all of the noise of the wedding that day turn the electricity down just have her be in that moment and that's how you get magic right wedding photography and photojournalism is not shooting by the hip everything in wedding photography at least the way i look at it is contrived weddings are larger than life you know anyone that says oh i only do photojournalism and blah 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 well you know great if you can do that without having a conversation with your subject well you are the world's absolute best wedding photographer and i don't know how you do it but i don't do it that way it's larger than life it, it is bigger than reality it is not an everyday occurrence so you have to do things to make em em embellish photos because people don't want snapshots and that's the difference between a photograph a professional portrait versus a snapshot right and you know it's really really important to learn the art of knowing people and getting that emotion to come to the surface because naturally as human beings for most of us anyway it's really difficult to uh to let those things bubble up to the surface because yeah. it's hard to deal with sensitive well, things especially people. with someone they don't really know right like exactly not, they could, they could, it's, it's like, like, I mean, well, what, like, what do you what do, do when you, you can't get the client to like open up? Like, you, like, what do you, do? you know, every client is different. And, and um, you know, you have to, like what I would do a lot of the times, like if, if I always, always, every single wedding package I've ever sold includes a uh, engagement, an engagement shoot. And I don't charge extra for the engagement shoot. So I don't say, oh, the, you know, I don't break down the cost in my wedding packages. I don't say like, you know, the, uh, the engagement shoots $300 and like, they'll say, okay, well, uh, we don't want, we don't want the engagement shoot. We want to save some money. So I make the engagement shoot mandatory. And the way I explain that to the client is look, you're interviewing me as much as I'm interviewing you. Mm -hmm. If we don't have a good rapport, I won't be able to do what I want to do. So you've looked at my albums, you've looked at my sample, you've looked at my portfolio, you've looked at all of this. My way of doing that is to is to get to know you. And I tell them, 
I am a guest at your wedding. I want you to treat me like a guest. I am just there to also take photographs of you, right? I'm not just another vendor. I'm not the DJ. I'm not the cake baker. I'm not the caterer, okay? I am your photographer and I need to be friends first, even if it's friends for a day. But we mm-hmm. need to be friends because, you know, that apprehensiveness will come through in those images, right? And if there's some kind of uncomfortable, like, you know, sense of uncomfortableness or, you know, some, you know, you just, some, you know, you, you know, sometimes people rub you the wrong way and you just, you know, you don't feel that connection. Well, that takes that takes both parties to resolve that. Right. And to understand each other. So I think it's really important as a wedding photographer to explain your method to clients. You know, I'm the type of wedding photographer. I like to have fun. Andre has known me for a long time. Yeah. You know, I like to be obnoxious when I shoot. I like to have fun. I'm like, you know, larger than life because that's what I want out of my subject. So um, I I do that and I exaggerate a lot of that because I want them to imitate me, right? I want them to think it's okay to let go. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to come out of your shell, you know, mm-hmm. get all that planning, all that pressure of this day. Guess what? It got lifted at six o'clock this morning. Now have fun. Today is your wedding day. Let that electricity of that day consume you. Let it, you know, inflate your ego. Let it, you know, this is about you. It should be about you. You are the people that should have the two biggest egos today. And what you do doesn't matter. Yeah, I think most most photographers kind of, wedding photographers kind of downplay the importance of the engagement shoot, right? Yeah, um, I like to do the engagement shoot because it's really critically important, um, especially in these days. Because back in the days, a couple of years ago, um, I used to like to sit and meet the couple face to face, even before the engagement shoot. Um, and all of that was just to build that kind of relationship um, and comfort level so that on the wedding day, it's not like if you're seeing each other for the first time. Absolutely. Right? Um, yeah. So these days, even if I can't meet the person face to face, I try to do a Zoom call or something of that sort, meet them face to face. And if you're able to do the engagement shoot as well, it gives you a sense of style of of how the people react and try to fix the issues. It also gives them some sort of comfort level on what you like to do on your shoot. Like, do you like to pose? Do you like to just flow with it? So I think the engagement uh, sessions is really important that you incorporate that into your workflow if you want to be a successful um, wedding photographer. It is, it, you know, it, it and it, it it serves its it has its purpose. One, well, quite a few purposes actually. Number one, it's an additional stream of revenue. You can up your prices and don't separate it. Consolidate your package. Um, it lets you know what are good good angles and bad angles, right? There's no ugly person, right? And what we have to remember in photography is every time we look in the mirror we see a reverse image of ourselves. Every time we look at a photograph, we see a non-reversed image of ourselves. So that's why what a lot of people, they they don't look bad in photographs. They're just photographed poorly, right? They don't, and and it seems odd to people, and the simple reality is, is when you look in a mirror, left is right and right is left. But when you look at a photograph, right is right and left is left. And th- if they're not used to that, they're going to think something is off with this photograph. So the engagement shoot is the greatest way to do to, to do accomplish two things. One, you as a photographer can see what is the best angle for your subjects. You know, what is the best way to capture them? What works conversationally? What doesn't work conversationally? How the timid, typical timid groom is going to be all you know oh yeah in real life but gets in front of the camera and is like this you know one of these guys um but then at least you know what how that's going to work right how it's going to look so it's it benefits you as the photographer i think more so than it does the couple the bonus for the couple is is hey they get engagement photographs the bonus for you as a photographer you get to know them and guess what you get to sell an engagement album right so you know, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, an engagement album costs just as much as a wedding album does. Same amount of work that goes into it, right? I mean, you're not, you know, mm-hmm. 
you're going to discount it a little bit, but you know, it's still the same quality that you're going to produce. And then that gives them something to look forward to on the wedding day. Right. Because when they see those, those engagement photographs and they, they get pumped, they get excited. They can't wait to be in front of your lens again. You know, it really does. Yeah. Teases them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I have I have used the some of the pictures in from the engagement sessions on the wedding days for other stuff. For example, I have couples that I build uh, big framed pictures for, where the guests sign right on that image for as as a wedding souvenir. So all yeah. the guests come in, they write on it, they wish them yeah. success, um, and you get our images from that engagement shoot. Right, and they also pay for that big framed image. Absolutely. Maybe sometimes it's a collage of two or three images. Uh, you also get paid, so that's another extra stream of income yeah. um, that comes in 100%. there because you get that. Yeah. And you can even put in, in, in like a like a flush mount, um, uh, you know, engagement album together. Like uh, I don't know if this is an engagement album, but uh, and that's not even a flush mount one. But um, let's see here. Like, you know, this is a wedding album, but this is this is like a flush mount um, uh, album here, right? So, um, hmm. but you, you can put in, you can put in blank spaces in your engagement album, right? For people to sign. So it becomes, a, it, it, rather than mm -hmm. them signing the photograph, it becomes the registry. Right. Right. Like and so that. they can they can have little notes written and you can you can template it's like a yearbook. Out. It's like a yearbook. Yeah. It's like a yearbook. I like you know, that. And and so. you can charge more for an article like that, a, a piece of like that than you would for just one framed print. You know, like you could charge eight, nine hundred dollars for the album, you know, but you what would you charge for the print? Maybe a couple hundred bucks? You know? And of course you could charge extra for custom frame and all that stuff, but uh but the album is something tactile. It's something that they can take with them. It's something that they can take on their honeymoon right away. Hmm. You know, they can reminisce about their wedding day uh, on the way to the airport. They can take this with yeah. them that night. Nice. Good enough. Like <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you guys pretty much touched on almost all the, the pros of doing an engagement shoot. Uh, but the one I wanted to stress on is, um, uh, to tell how timid or how awkward the, the couple is when it comes to posing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are easy to pose. Uh, others, you know, it takes a lot to get them in different positions. So once you know all those things beforehand, it really helps on the yeah. day of, uh, you either be more specific or you will, uh, if they are unique poses, you might want to sketch it or show them samples, you know, yeah whatever you do to make it easier for them to get into that position, uh, you'll be well prepared to do that. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, one of the, the ways of, of getting around this, so I recommend any aspiring wedding photographer or even anyone that's been shooting a long time, take a, tra if you have not done this as a photographer, take a traditional um, posing course. Like I'm talking like 60s and 70s type of portraiture. Uh, there's a photographer, I think he's passed away now, Monty Zucker. Uh, and Monty Zucker, um, he uh, was, was an American photographer. And that's what he did. He did studio photography and the standard posing and all of that sort of thing. That is your starting point, right? And you need to, and, and why I say it's a starting point, because a, a course like that, that teaching studio lighting, teaching traditional posing all translates to the same thing and has the same effect regardless of what your environment is. And when you take courses like that, you learn how to deal with particular body types and shapes and sizes and skin tones and things like that. Um, remember, you're the professional, so you have to know technical things, technical aspects and different techniques to make a more heavy set person look more flattering. Remember, they're seeing themselves in the mirror the whole time. So what do we do when we look at ourselves in the mirror? We naturally find our best angle. We don't consciously do it, but think about when, you know, aside from Andre, when you're doing your hair, <laughs> well, at least the hair on the top of your head. If you're doing this hair down here, then that's okay. But, you know, you're naturally going to, um, 
you're naturally going to position yourself how you feel the most attractive right right, yeah. right? and and so like if you're if you're a heavier set person you know you don't want them square in front of the camera like this you're gonna you're gonna angle them a little bit probably more so this way uh, you know so it's a little bit more flatter you're gonna raise the camera angle up a little bit so you're shooting down remember it's the same basic techniques of photography whatever is closer to the lens is going to appear larger whatever is further away is going to appear smaller and so we want to bring you know the face a little bit you know even the the angle that we we use the camera at is going to slim mm -hmm. down the body right so you want you want a, a in particular a bride more so than a groom because you know men well, we're idiots right but um you know brides are very very self conscious about their body image and they want to look like the the best they've ever looked in their whole life on that wedding day mm -hmm. and so that's why you need to employ those techniques as a professional photographer yeah. so it's really important to take those courses it's, you know posing starts from the ground up right so you got to learn how to plant the feet you got to you know you got to know if you want a particular uh you know you want them in a c curve a, re a reverse c an s curve you know an i pose there's all kinds of things that you employ that in 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 environmental wedding photography that you would employ in the studio that the same techniques that fashion photographers use you got to sort of think of your subjects um as as you know play-doh as plasticine they're yours to mold um and you got to be careful because have you guys ever heard of the white coat syndrome no <laughs> so the white coat syndrome okay. is there there was a uh a study done like a psychological thing where they they had a subject and they had three people three other subjects in a behind a closed glass window and they had scientists people dressed in white lab coats and they said push this button and then what it looked like with the people behind the glass were like writhing in pain like you were electrocuting them or torturing them but because the people in the white coat said it's okay they kept doing it right so that's white coat syndrome so you have to really consider you as the photographer you have the power to make somebody look very gorgeous or not so gorgeous they will listen to you right so mm -hmm. you know the whole, whole thing about the uh you know sort of shy timid subject is a real thing mm -hmm. but always understand they are there to take direction and you know you did come up with some very good suggestions and i do it too the magic of digital is you can flip that camera around and you tell them look how amazing you look you know and that you know that's what you need like some people naturally hey they're they're great at it they can do it they're naturals they're comfortable in their own skin but not everyone is but when they see what they look like on the back of that lcd screen you know on the back of that camera that gives them the confidence to keep going right you know you, yeah, it's like yeah. dangling a carrot you know mm -hmm. and, and you have to you always have to use encouraging words like you don't never use the word no when you're posing someone you know if you don't like the way something's going and you're getting frustrated you know hey let's take a break let's grab a coffee let's grab a drink you know your cheeks might, are probably sore you've been smiling for the last 20 minutes let's take a break go back and think about it if you are having trouble identifying you know what a good angle is for your subject just shoot them shoot sh shoot them sort of you know like you ever, you've heard of the around the clock sort of method with photography mm -hmm. yeah. this is a similar approach except you you get her to do this 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 until you find out okay what is her angle what is his angle don't be afraid to do that you know, it's just the way you deliver it and the way you ask for it, right? So, you know, you can't say, oh, I'm not sure. Say, you know what, hey, can you do this for me? Do this for me, do this for me. Okay, let's take a break. Go back, take a few minutes, study what, you know, what the good angle is, and then then you know, right? That's great. So, I like that, you know, don't be afraid to press the pause button. Remember, you're the professional. Never panic, never let them see you sweat. No matter if you're pulling your hair out on the inside, you're frustrated, 
you, you know, you think the couple is an asshole or a couple of assholes or whatever, you know, that's normal. It, it is a stressful, stressful job. But remember, you're not selling wedding photography. You're not selling photographs. You're selling one thing. You're selling an experience, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that is what is going to generate follow on business for you. And what is the follow on business to wedding photography? Besides all of the bridesmaids and all, you know, all the people and that sort of thing, right? Because remember, you're performing and you're always performing for your potential future clients. And that is the wedding party. Because guess what? They're mm -hmm. all getting married too. They're all going to be inspired to get married, right? I have made more money on referrals than I ever did at wedding shows and advertising and, you know, wedding boards and blah, 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 which is, you know, at least you got to look at it this way, birds of a feather, right? So you shoot the high priced wedding. It's at the beautiful venue, you know, gorgeous, you know, five, $10,000 wedding dress, stuff like that. All of those people all fly around in the same circle, right? So you're not, it's not like you're fishing on the internet for some shoot and burn job, you know, that you, you don't know who you're, who you're getting, right? But you know, if that, if th these group of friends, you know, probably, you know, maybe they work together, maybe whatever, like a lot of my clientele, I, I shot a wedding for um, a, a neonatal nurse uh, from sick kids, you know, from that, I got doctors, other nurses, like just, you know, people with tons and tons of disposable income that, you know, don't think twice about spending $1,200 on a wedding album, you know, so yeah. you got to remember that circle of influence, right? And that's what you're trying to do when it comes to building your business and, and continuing to generate business. You have to fly in the, you have to fly in the circles that you want to be in. Right. So, you know, if you go on Kijiji, well, then you're going to find people that look for wedding photography on Kijiji, you know? Yeah. And you're going to get people with a Kijiji budget. And hey, look, there's nothing wrong with that. There is a market there. Don't get me wrong. I am not disparaging that at all. But you need to ask yourself, am I the shoot and burn kind of guy? Do I want to make, you know, a thousand, two thousand bucks on a weekend? Say, OK, well, here's your thumb drive and you know, peace. I'm never going to talk to you again. I hope you like your mediocre wedding photography. You know, you owe me $1,500 e-transfer me and we're going to go our separate ways. You can make money that way. Absolutely. You know, or you could be selling an experience, you know, here is your beautiful flush mount album, right? You know, here are, you know, here's the magic of your, of your day, you know, things like that. Yeah, yep. I think I agree that experience is very important, right? Selling that experience. Because um, um, personally, um, what I've noticed is that I've shot people's weddings, shot their kids' first birthdays, uh, shot baby showers <laughs> for the same couples, yeah. right? And so it, once you get that going and you get a good relationship from one event, you're most likely to keep shooting that same um couple you, for years to come yeah. Uh, yeah and you know how you do that you say congratulations on getting married here's an envelope i want you to open this on your first anniversary inside there's a coupon first anniversary shoot complimentary newborn shoot complimentary and then hopefully you get the newborn shoot because that's money for the next 18 years and you know what you do there is you you get an album like this not a flush mount this is a slip in album right like this this year you okay. slide the, the photos in and out and when the kid is born you get 18 pages in this album every year they pay you for a birthday portrait hmm. genius man yeah. so <laughs> There are Genius. ways to make money in this business. And you don't make money on thumb drives. You make money on things that people can carry with them. Right? Yeah, it's and, so tangible. Yeah. yeah, and then you tell them, when your son or daughter gets married, this can be at their wedding. 
instead of a slideshow. Put this on the table. Ooh, you want the digital? Nice. You can have them for a slideshow. No problem. No. That that's that's pulling heartstrings right there, buddy. <laughs> so, so my yeah. next question, I have two two key questions I want to ask, uh, but I'm gonna ask the first one first, because um, I know most people in the chats are very into much into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't want to go into specific of gear, but um, roughly, what will be the essential gear, right, for someone who? is just about to start to get shooting their first wedding well i you know if you're if you're just getting started i would recommend you know sticking in the 35 millimeter range it's a little bit more cost effective than going into like the fuji g systems and things like that you know um i i think if you had the budget i would be going for like you know one of the 50 megapixel 645 fuji uh digitals because that seems to be the standard these days but uh, you know, I'm not too familiar in the Canon space, but I'm sure there's an equivalent um, like to a, like a D850 or a D700. There's more than enough data in those Nikon, in the, you know. So, you know, the man, like I don't really give a crap about manu camera manufacturers. They all basically do the same thing. Um, the only reason I say the Fuji um, uh, uh, medium format system the digital system what are they the g100 or the or gfx or whatever they are the gfx 50 and the 100 i think 100 is probably a little overkill um uh, for weddings because you don't really need those big giant data files um it's just you know you get the nice quality of images and, and that sort of thing you remember you're building an album so you're going to be cropping and i don't i'm not a big believer in full cropping in camera because you're building a you're building a, a wedding album so you do need to leave yourself, yourself some space in the frame so some of those larger format uh larger sensor cameras would be helpful but you know in terms of just say just getting started you basically need a good body right a, you know at least a 24 megapixel you know hate to talk megapixels but uh you know probably 24 is about the right amount i think uh when it comes to a 35 millimeter system and you know basically sort of the holy trinity of focal length so you know in the nikon world it'd be the you know you need to go from say 14 millimeter to 200 so in the nikon world and canon as well you know it'd be i think the canon is probably what a 1635 and then nikon's got the 1424 and then you know the 24 to 70s and then the 70 to 200. Uh, of course you know you've got to hedge your bets you need a backup body. It doesn't have to be the same quality of body as your primary camera per se. Ideally, it should be. Um, but uh, you know, if you're just kind of getting started, you know, money's tight. I'm a firm believer, like in the in the business of photography, you got to ask yourself, when when do I upgrade my camera? My decision on that is when I am limited creatively. So if the current equipment that I have limits what I want to produce and doesn't allow me to get that product and that product will turn me a profit within eight to 12 months, then I will, I will likely buy that piece of equipment. Um, anything beyond eight to 12 months doesn't make any sense because, you know, digital equipment, aside from lenses, um, pretty much have a shelf life of 18 to 22 months. So if you're not going to turn a profit, you know, within, you know, eight months, Eh, what's the point, right? Like you're not, you, you know, yeah, I might limit you creatively, but from a pure business standpoint, if it's sitting there collecting dust and not generating profit, then it's generating cost. So okay. we, have a, we have a, here we go. We have a question for you. The question from the audience. Marketing and getting clients. Well, uh, in the BC times, um, can I, I'm assuming the whole <laughs> audience can see this question, right? Yes. yes yes so in the bc times you know before covid before COVID, yeah um you know you could do wedding shows and things like that and wedding shows for a new photographer are very helpful but of course you need to um have at least five or six eye-catching stunning images like stuff that you want to put on big canvases and things like that because as people walk by your booth you need you need something to, to catch them um, and you got to make yourself stand out right so just albums on a table is going to be very difficult to do that um, and i don't recommend having like a big 
monitor showing your, I mean, you do need a monitor to show like, you know, with the slideshow showing your portfolio and that sort of thing, but big prints that people can see albums that they can touch, um, would be the best way to do it. Um, of course you'd have to be somewhat established to do that, but let's say you're just getting started, which I think is what the, the, the person asking the question is you're just getting started. How do you get yourself out there? Well, uh, it's difficult. Uh, I'll tell you, there is no there is no secret sauce um, for getting started in wedding photography. Um, I think the best way to do it is to take it slow. Um, you you know, and it's hard to do this because you need to find an existing pro that's willing to take you under their wing. Um, you're not going to learn it on your own. It's going to be very, very well. You can, you will learn it on your own, but the cost of learning it is going to be so high that you're likely, you know, going to pack it in after the first year. You're going to be like, I'm not making any money at this. I've spent, you know, forty thousand dollars in camera gear, you know, and and understanding that the wedding might take eight hours, eight to twelve hours on the wedding day, but the lead up to that is not eight to twelve hours. It's closer to fifty-five to sixty hours. And prepping the client like you know you're meeting with them you're discussing this you're negotiating you got an engagement shoot you got contracts you got deposits you got all kinds of stuff questions you know like all kinds of things that come up to that that wedding day and it's typically 55 hours up front 12 hours on the wedding day and then probably another 75 to 80 hours in digital processing album layouts selling you know, all of that other stuff. So it can be very, very difficult. So if you're just getting started, marketing yourself is going to be difficult because you need material to market. You need to have a portfolio. So step one, find a professional that you can second with, that you can learn with. And remember, don't be desperate. You're interviewing that pro as much as they're interviewing you because you got to work together. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, if it's like oil and water, don't bother because you're just going to get turned off and the other person's going to be like, think, think you're useless and it's not going to do anything for your confidence. Right? So find yourself a pro that you're, that's willing to work with you to let you do some stuff on your own, to let you observe, not just carry the bag around. Of course, your first couple, you might just be carrying the bag around, but then you can, when you have an opportunity like that, it's really important that you observe that you see, where is the photographer positioning themselves when, right? Because a wedding is pretty much all follow a typical timeline, right? You know, like there's the, the prep, the getting ready, there's the, there's the bride, um, you know, at, at, the, at, the, at the vestibule of the church, the groom's waiting up front, all of those things. So look at where the photographer is positioning themselves for what is going to happen next in the wedding. So much like, um, reportage or photojournalism, if you've seen the moment, you've missed it, yeah. right? So <laughs> it's, it's really important <laughs> that you use that opportunity to observe. Once you have gotten a decent enough portfolio, right, that is when you can start marketing yourself. So get yourself a website, um, do a lot of research on, um, uh, SEO, you know, like your search engine optimization and things like that. Um, get yourselves in in wedding shows and things like that. Um, when start things a get, channel. yeah, start a YouTube channel hey. uh, or a podcast. Um, <laughs> get yourself um, uh, in touch with uh, caterers, wedding planners, um, venues, all of those things. The website's only going to take you so far. It's a place for people to go and to possibly find you on Google. Um, but generally, the photographer is not the first thing people look for. What's the first thing they typically look for is the uh, reception the venue. The decorators. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. Or a planner, right? They're either going to yeah. go to a planner or they're going to say, I want my wedding here. Right? I want my. I want to get married in this church. I want my reception here. And then everything needs to fit into that box. So those are the people that you need to scratch their back. So get to know a wedding planner. Say, I will come in and I will shoot your details for free. I'll get there. But you just tell me I'll get there before the other photographer. I won't say anything. I'll just shoot your, I'll shoot your details. I'll shoot your venue, your whatever. 
Those images are 100% yours, royalty free. Please scratch my back. Do stuff like that. Go, go to the, go to the, uh, you know, the churches, the chapels, the, you know, wherever. Get to know the priests. Get to know the caterers. I'll do your. Go to the caterer. I will do your food photography for free. You know, all royalty free. But please recommend me. You may get nothing. You know, mm -hmm. you let's say you're, well, yeah. But there's 52 weeks in a year. Yeah. If you get three weddings out of that, you know, and let's say you're just getting started and you're charging two thousand dollars for a wedding, right? Because you got to charge what your experience dictates to what you're capable of producing. But let's say you're you're getting two thousand twenty five hundred bucks and you get say three four weddings out of that. That's ten grand. You know, not bad if you're just getting started, right? And then what happens mm -hmm. from there? It's exponential growth because if you can perform well in front of those subjects, right? In front of those couples and their families and their wedding parties, that's going to get your referral business. So marketing is difficult, but you really, really need to target your marketing when you're getting started. When you're established, you can rely on a little bit more broad based marketing and more word of mouth and referrals. But, you know, you got to give you got to give to get in the in when yeah, you're getting yeah. started in anything right so you got to give freebies to the venues to the caterers to the you know go yeah, to the baker yeah go to the bakers go to the cake makers i will shoot your cakes i will shoot i will get my videographer buddy to come in and we will make a promo video video for you putting a cake together how would you like that okay, okay. all i want you to do next wedding next wedding couples that come in please just give them my card you know here and 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 make um you know even if it's just like cheap um try not to go too cheap so it looks cheap but like lower cost um uh little portfolios right like so even if it's just like uh like a blurb kind of book or something like that or talk yeah, yeah. to wedding album manufacturers get 50 percent off get yourself some small little pocket-sized wedding albums with your contact info and a sleeve that holds your uh, holds your business cards, right? So do all of that stuff. And then, you know, people can, when they come in to get their cake or their, uh, um, their you know, whatever, um, you can have the person show them this little album. Here's a great photographer, you know? Okay. Check James these out, James. and here's the guy's card. <laughs> you should be in sales, James. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> wedding it's, photography, when, when up, you're, man. it's sales, right? I mean, it professional is sales. photography it's is sales. sales. It's good. Though. I got I like another it. another uh, question here from the audience. Do I use continuous lighting? It depends. Um, yeah, um, I, I will. I will use like LED, you know, lighting. I have you know something like this. Uh, that I'll take. So I don't know if you can see that. I don't even know if it's. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh. So you know, I'll take. I you got to be be prepared for um, every environmental thing that gets thrown at you, right? So yeah. um, you know whether or not it's it's you're using strobes or. Uh, continuous light, whatever. I, I am a big fan of, uh, well, it, it really depends. I guess uh, I like that. I prefer natural light and reflectors personally um, because it just kind of, I like the way it works. Um, I shot, I shoot in the Nikon I system. So, the Nikon so, system so. so I, um, I uh, <laughs> got a thumbs up there from me there. Nice. Uh, so I'm a big fan of their creative lighting system. And why I like Nikon's creative lighting system is because the um the speed lights operate independently of the camera so if you put your camera in manual mode they actually decouple themselves so um the flash will expose for my subject and then i can control the ambient light with my camera body so it just makes it easier for me and then of course you know you can have uh different banks of, of speed lights at, at different um intensities and things like that um I, I really find it depends um, on the venue of the wedding and kind of what the couple wants. So when you use um, artificial light, uh, mostly, and I'm talking about strobes, when, you, when you're using any type of strobe, you're going to get typically higher contrast 
uh, images and they're going to be very, very crisp and crunchy, which is cool. Um, and there are couples that, you know, if they're kind of like, a, it's a very sort of uh, like in your face, like a lot of Indian weddings, as an example, very bright colors, things like that. You want a lot of good, strong contrast uh, in those images. I will tend to use more strobes in that case. But let's say it's a little bit more demure, a little bit more of ethereal, sort of romantic, sort of wispy kind of feel, very muted colors. That's when I'll tend to go a little bit more natural light and reflectors because the contrast softens up quite a bit. So um, again, it's art and science, right? So you've got to use science to achieve the art that you're looking for. And that's what sets us as professional photographers apart from somebody that's just learning, right? Um, and, and believe me, the only difference between a professional and someone uh, that's an amateur photographer is just the amount of time they've been wasting money. Uh, so, uh, and how much money they've wasted. Uh, but, uh, um, but, but we need to separate ourselves. Uh, you know, we need to, you know, really define ourselves as professional photographers by knowing that scientific part of photography, right? Because like, Hey, you can spray and pray and come up with some really amazing shots. You know, you can get 25 shots out of 25,000 shutter clicks. No problem. Any trained monkey can do that. Right. Um, but do, do you want to shoot 2,500 shots and get, you know, 1,800 to 2,000 good ones? That's what I'd like to do. Well, I don't even want to shoot 2,500, to be quite honest with you. It's a mm -hmm. wedding day, for crying out loud. There are not 2,500 moments in a wedding day, um, despite what people might think. Quantity is, is not, you know, it's quality over quantity when it comes to photography, in my opinion. Um, but how do you create that quality? That quality comes from knowing the technical aspects and then marrying that with the emotional aspects and the conversational aspects of your client. Mm -hmm. That's why I say the cardinal sin of any people photographer is talking to the back of the camera. Because the first thing a client thinks is this guy does not know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's very true. true. Yeah. Okay, another That's question from Ben. Do I have a go-to film for wedding photography? Um, yes. Uh, well, for those that don't know me, I am uh, I'm a, a co-host of the Classic uh, Camera Revival podcast. So check us out if you're interested. Oh, yeah. um, I um, I have two two film fridges here uh, in my dark room, uh, and yes, I have a dark room because I shoot film. Um, uh, my favorite uh, black and white film uh, is uh, Fuji Across. Uh, and in terms of a color film, uh, it would be, uh, well, these days, uh, you know, they just recently dis discontinued Fuji Pro 400H, um, uh, which would, would have been my go-to. Uh, but I do like um, uh, Portrait 160, um, which is a current uh, film today. So. And, and that we can get into shooting film for weddings, but that's a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, I'd have you back for that. Yeah. Have to bring you back for that one, man. Well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I would love to talk film with you guys anytime again. So awesome, yeah, a film show would be great. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I know uh, when I met you and stuff, you were doing weddings with the other James. Oh yeah, my buddy James. Yeah, the James. We were the James and James. We had a very we had a twenty thousand dollar package to get both of us. We sold one. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, okay. Were most of your weddings solo, or were you uh, like two never two? solo? I mean, yeah, no? occasionally solo if it's like a small four-hour gig or something like that. Uh, okay. Intimate. But um, you always at least need a second body person. Um, whether or not it's to hold lights, it's to you know have a second. You know, you're 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 doing a lot. Yeah. Right. Photography is about, especially when it comes to people, but all photography is about the details. Right. And it's it's so easy in, as a wedding photographer because there's so much going on to develop tunnel vision. So it's very helpful <laughs> to have somebody with some skills looking at the scene. Say, oh, let me go fix her dress. Right. You know, and that's what and that's a really good way. Um, it's actually an excellent question because, you know, the, the question that was raised earlier about, you know, how do you market yourselves? And I think, you know, find yourself uh, someone to, a step to second shoot with. But when you go in there, be very mindful about how you conduct yourself, right? So 
don't make a big deal about going and fixing her dress, right? Just, you know, whisper to the primary shooter, well, her dress is out of place. I'll just go fix it for you. Or how would you like me to fix it? Right? How would you like it placed? It looks a little ruffled. Are you okay with that? Do you want me to fix it? Don't just blurt out all her, you know, and then go take over and, and do whatever. Cause you know, that'll be the first and last time that, that person will be like, yeah, get out of here. Even though you're right. Right. But there's a way to do it. Right. And it's just like how you're having a conversation with a client. So, you know, a lot of little tricks that I use is especially like if the groom is really, um, you know, timid or, you know, not coming out of his shell or whatever. I have a code word with the bride. So listen, um, Miss Bride, when I say the word bicycle, I want you to whisper something really dirty in his ear. <laughs> like, like the first time, you know, you guys did something really kinky. I don't want to know what it is, but I just want you to say, remember that time we did this? <laughs> right? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. You know, or I'll I'm say sure. to him, I want you to tell her the story of how you proposed to her. Right? So lots of ways to get them. So you're not doing it. They're doing it, they're doing it. but have those code words, right? So lots of little tricks and things like that. And you have to evoke emotion in, in your subjects. You got to yeah. bring up, you know, sort of faux pas kind of subjects, I guess, if you will. And that's okay. They're not out in public. It's just, you know, it's just between three friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, man. Yeah. Um, really good tips. That's fun. Yeah. You make me want to start shooting weddings. <laughs> Advil, my friend, Advil. You'll need a lot. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's hard. It, it's grueling. Like it is a long day, twelve. You know, sometimes twelve, fourteen hours of lugging your gear back and forth. You know, uh, eating your your dinner is cold because you know you get served dinner and you know, and that's another thing. Always, always, always. If you're shooting a reception, you get a hot meal. Or you get an hour's break, their choice, and make sure it's in your contract. Yeah, you got to do that. You got to feed yourself too a bit. Yeah, you got to eat, right? I mean, yeah. like, how can you go all, you know, they're eating, they're taking breaks, they brought snacks and whatever. And most couples are pretty good. And, you know, if, if you, you know, just make sure you cover yourselves and, 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 and don't be afraid to tell them what your expectations are. You know, right. look, you like my work. Well, this is what I need to be successful. Mm -hmm. this, is, and, this is this is your responsibility in this equation. This is my responsibility. You know, in order for this to work, we both have to work together. So, and in and the grand scheme of things, it's such a small part. So it's like, yeah, right. And then try to eat first. Try to um, yeah. convince them that you know the friend is eat first. Eat because when you I, can. Yeah, tell the venue. Yeah. Listen, can you? I know I, I'm not looking you know, it doesn't have to be the same meal that you're serving. It can be a vendor meal, whatever, but say, hey, listen, it will be really helpful for you and in your best interest to tell the venue, because they're idiots, serve the vendors first. Let us eat, because we're the only ones working here today, right? Let us eat so then, you know, when you get your speeches and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not running up to shoot somebody, which, you know, shooting somebody taking a speech is like the worst thing ever in wedding photography, by the way. Like, who the hell wants a picture of, you know, grandpa at a podium, you know? <laughs> like, it's just, you do it because it's necessary, but I, I am, that is the, you know, the things I hate the most about weddings are shooting speeches at the reception because, like, what's the point? Yeah, I, I hate, I just hate shooting people eating. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't. Shoot. No, I don't. I don't shoot people. Yeah, eating. I, don't shoot during, I don't shoot during. I've dinner. had a couple of weddings where people want photos when they are eating. Like, what's the point? Yeah. People with food in their mouths. Nobody yeah. wants to watch yeah. that later. But a lot of things too. You got to remember, you're there to capture things that people don't see but want yeah. to see, right? So if you just, you know, here's an example. I want a picture of the groom when the bride is walking down the aisle because I want her to see what he looked like, what was what were in his eyes when he saw her in that white dress for the first time. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be looking at her. I'm going to be looking at him. Yeah. Bang, bang. Now I can look at her. Yeah. Right? Because that is what's going to be meaningful to that bride. 
that is what my husband thought of. That was what was going through his head. And hopefully it's good emotion. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> not, oh, shit. but uh, what have I done? Uh, but, you know, but that's what, that's what you got to think, right? Like you got to really sort of reverse perspectives. And mm -hmm. it's not so much what do you want to see, but it's what do you want to show people? You are there to capture the day, right? So while everyone's staring at her and no one's paying attention to him and he's got tears running down his eyes, you know, his heart's skipping a beat. He's so happy, he's, you know, eager to get married and has all this anticipation and emotion. It takes you less than five seconds to get that shot, mm -hmm. right? You, yeah, those you, are, got, you got a good 30 seconds to shoot her in all positions walking down that aisle. Yeah, and those are, those are really, really good shots. When you can get those, oh, yeah. yeah. Because that's, that's natural born emotion. Yeah. Right. That's not something that's contrived. Right. That's real. Yeah. Like genuine, organic emotion. Oh, here's a, here's another question. Quick. Uh, how long before? How long after does the wedding? Does hmm. the, yeah, the wedding. It really depends on the time of year. Um, I really I recommend outsourcing your wedding processing to somebody that does it and find a local person, um, especially mm -hmm. if you're like a smaller operation, you're just getting started. Like, you know, you shoot four weddings, like you're exhausted, right? And then you're meeting with the next set of clients, get someone else to do all of your sort of soft processing in Lightroom or whatever, um, you know, send ship them a hard drive or whatever you need to do, get them to process it, send it back. So then at least you can deliver proofs. Um, and then as far as the actual album itself, well, it really depends on a lot of things. The couple has to select the album. How much part do they want to take in the layout and that sort of thing? So do you want, are you doing the layouts completely yourself or are you working with them to do it? Have two different rates. You want to work with, they want to work with you, charge more, right? You want to build the layout and say, okay, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get initial layout. Uh, then you're going to have an opportunity to make changes. And then I'm going to give you the, the second layout. Then you're going to have one more opportunity to make changes. Third one is done. And then any changes after that third one is time and materials. So you're just billing by the hour at that point. You know, and you say, well, it's $150 an hour to have me, you know, constantly go back and forth and edit. So they have to make a decision too. And especially if they say we want more photographs, well, then just add more pages. Not a problem. Right. And of course, you sell two pages at a time in an album. So if your page is two hundred dollars a page, you know, every layout's four hundred bucks. Right. Don't be afraid to charge what you're worth. Right. You are a professional. You're not, yeah. you know, Uncle Bob, who's got a fancy Leica, which is absolutely useless for weddings. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I love it. that's awesome. That's awesome. It's great. man. It's about selling. Always be selling. Oh yeah, always. Talking about Uncle Bob's, how do you deal with Uncle Bob's? I stand right in front of them. <laughs> I get my assistant to shine the reflector right in their lens. Yeah. <laughs> and I also have in my contract, if I am not the primary photographer on the wedding day, I walk, you pay. Ooh. And I'm, I am not afraid to be that much of a dick about it. Because mm. it's my name. Yes, I'm, that's true. You know, and if you're going to interfere with me doing my job, remember we said it's a partnership. Yeah. They have to live up. And, and I tell them, I'm going to, and I, I, I do have a specific Uncle Bob clause in my contracts. I am going to make the first request for Uncle Bob to stop. Right? He does it again. You're going to make the request for Uncle Bob to stop. Uncle Bob does it the third time, I stop shooting the scene. Hmm. Plain and simple. Because how yeah. else are you going to get your job done? What? I would rather not give them something than give them something shitty. Yeah. Right. Like, don't be afraid to ha like. You you have to have somewhat of a god complex. You have to really go into that wedding as the best photographer there. Because why the hell else would you be there if you're mm -hmm. not the best photographer there? Yeah, because they're paying you. So. Yeah, so you damn well better be the best photographer there and damn yeah. well act like it and do everything in your power to make sure that you are producing that. I, you know, I certainly wouldn't be as harsh as I'm saying it now. Of course, <laughs> obviously, you're going to deliver that message diplomatically, but explain to them why. 
you know, say, look, you know, do, and ask them, do you have relatives that are, especially with cell phones, right? Like, and tell them, do you want cell phones in the image of you walking down the aisle? Do you want, you know, you want this, you know, people hanging over, you know, with cell phones everywhere, like doing some shitty iPhone video of you walking down the aisle. Is that what you want? Or do you want them paying attention to you? Right. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to tell the couple there are things you can do. Have the priest make an announcement, you know, talk to the problem children and they know who they are. Call them, say, listen, and, you know, and B or whatever, you know, Uncle Bob. Put the cameras away. We've hired a professional. And guess what? We're going to give you an album. Okay? You're not the professional photographer just because you went and bought yourself, you know, an M10 or something like that because you decided that, uh, you know, $12,000 is best spent on a camera that doesn't autofocus. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into it jay let's get into it <laughs> hey i i know you know I, I like leica and that sort of thing but you know right yeah, tool that, right purpose that, yeah uncle yeah. bo can really be a, a huge problem and uh you know you go and you start looking at your pictures and you see people are looking all over the place because for some reason uh, people feel like, okay, if they look at you for a few shots, okay, they need to look at Uncle Bob, they need to look at Auntie, whatever. And so what I do is I just put my camera down and I turn towards the uh, Uncle Bob and I'm like, okay, let me know when you're done. Absolutely. And then he gets uncomfortable and then he leaves and then I take over. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I just I just step back and I say, no, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll start when you're ready. Hopefully the light is still good. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah, you know, be, well, because what else are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't start off doing that. That's you know, it escalates, of course, right? Most of the time, if you're for, and don't be afraid to be firm the first time, right? You know, remember, you're doing, you're there for that couple. That's who your contract is with. Your contract is not with Uncle Bob, right? So, yeah, yeah, and that's that's why in my contract, I also actually state that. Um, it's the the person's responsibility to make sure uh, to advise um, some of the guests stay away out of the way as much as they yeah. can. Uh, but I also try to enforce it. So if I see you in my way, I'll tell you to sit down. Right? I'm not going to be shy about it. Um, I'm there to make sure I get the best pictures for the couple that day. So. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're being paid to provide a service and. Yeah. And I explained to the couple, look, the only people that that, you know, who's getting harmed in that situation is you because you're not allowing me to be successful at what we agreed to. You know, mm -hmm. so and of course, you have to be very diplomatic about it. Right. I mean, you know, but don't be afraid to be firm with the couple too. like you got to pull them aside and say, listen, I know I'm not trying to add stress to your day here, but I've tried, you know, two, three times already to deal with this individual. You know, or you, or you know what you do? If you don't want to do it with the couple, you say, who's your enforcer? Assign an enforcer. You know, get me your bitchiest bridesmaid, bridesmaid ever <clears throat> and the biggest dick groomsman, which probably has the smallest dick, but you know, um, you know, but, but get me those two, you know, uh, assertive individuals that, you know, know the family, right? That aren't going to be uncomfortable telling you know uncle bob to take a hike say listen man get out of here you know that sort of thing uh, get enforcers there's yeah. no problem in doing that so you don't have to put it on on the couple right get them to assign and of course when you're doing your group shots and all and assembling all the people you don't know about the extended family so then you say who from your side i need two from your side i need two from your side you're going to gather up these people for the formals that's your job so I don't know them, yeah, and and I can't be running around finding people when I need to be setting up shots. I need to be paying attention to lighting, and of course, group posing and all of that sort of thing too, right? So, um, don't be afraid to uh, to get that outsourced per se to uh, a member of the wedding party, or you know, some other relative that may or may not be part of the wedding party. And of course, always put in your contracts that formals are to be done with no other photographers. So everyone is to have their cameras away during formals because 
um, formals are, uh, you know, as cheesy as they might be in the grand scheme of things, are the things that people find the most value in. So when you have, you know, Uncle Bob out in the corner, of course, you get one person in a group of like, you know, the large group, 20 people. And of course, grandma is looking at, at you know, Uncle whatever, you know, everyone's got eyes right into the lens because you're saying, look at the lens. Don't look at me. Look in the lens. Look in the lens. Look in the lens. Here we go. Everybody look in the lens. And of course, grandma is staring at, you know, whoever with an iPhone that's yeah. like, you know, at some weird angle. So now all of a sudden you've got this perfect group shot and then you've got to pull her face off some other image and then plunk it on top of that one, you know, and of course, how do you, you don't charge for that kind of editing in, in Photoshop that you really should because, you know, it probably takes a good 30 minutes to make that look right. So remember, if you you need to manage it, right? Like you need to manage the shoot and you have to, have to, have to be assertive, you have to be outgoing as a wedding photographer. Otherwise it's the tail wagging the dog. Yeah. Right. And that's the other thing too. I don't need a shot list. I don't. I've done this a million times. What are you giving me a shot list? Yeah. Yes, I'll get a picture of you and your parents. Absolutely. I guarantee I won't forget. You know, like it's people are kind of, you know, you're going to have your very controlling people and something and you got to play it by ear. So, yeah, OK, fine. Give me the shot list, you know, but then a good way to counteract that is to preempt it and say, is there anybody coming in from out of town? Uh, aside from your family, is there anyone, a best friend that's moved away, a college buddy or whatever that's, you know, so get them thinking about that and say, okay, well, that, all right, let's write that down because that's atypical. So then mm. you are telling them, I already know the shots that you want, right? Now I'm asking you for the non-traditional one. So then they veer away from, you know, the list and then they tell you sort of the unique list, if you will. And then that also portrays you as somebody that's got a lot of experience and has, has done this before too, right? So. Okay. 100%. It's great, James. Yeah, man. I could talk about this for the next, you know, three hours, but. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think uh, that's a great place to leave it off. And uh, James, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us. And uh, I'm just going to go around. And James, don't go anywhere yet. So, right. so yeah, I got a surprise for you. No oh boy. That, uh, <laughs> thanks everybody for watching. Uh, don't forget, we're going to post to the uh, Open and Shutter IG in the next day or so uh, for the self-portrait challenge episode next week. Uh, hopefully, we get some submissions from people, and uh, we'll all have our own anyway. Just a just a fun challenge, self-portraits. So it's that information will go up on the Open Shutter IG in the next couple of days. Uh, for next week's show so yeah. again thanks james and uh over to paul thanks james uh yeah you really pumped me up so uh great job and i hope you come back for a second session my, and, my uh, pleasure man my pleasure yeah really good really good i just love the passion so uh come back some other time me. that'd be great be mm -hmm. yeah man it's great and uh, thanks. Make sure you follow. I'm pretty sure Andre put James's IG in the description, so make sure you follow James. IG, yeah. IG, and uh, website are down below. And, so uh, yeah, podcast, all that stuff. The podcast, I'm gonna have to add. But yeah, which I think yeah, add the classic good. camera revival if you want. Just a YouTube channel, man. You just listen to a YouTube channel. I will add that. Yeah, we actually do have a YouTube channel. Okay, I'll, I'll send it to Andre. Okay, cool. <laughs> I will add you? it then. <laughs> I'm everywhere. There's, there's, there's a message for you, Paul. Yeah, no, I'm lazy. I'm lazy. Hey, thanks, James. Um, it was an interesting time, very, uh, very informative um, time. Um, and, and, you know, as, as someone who's been winning for a while, I still, there's a lot still for me to learn, and I, and I got a lot of good info from this as well. Um, there's always, there's always, you know, stuff to learn. Um, I always say nobody is ever an island, and you can never learn everything. Can, every time, there's always something new to learn. So, absolutely. If you, yeah, if you want to really teach, great. you have to open up yourself to to learn. So, yep, yep, it's great. So, thank you very much for uh, coming on. Hopefully, we talk, get to talk to you again sometime soon. All right, um, and guys, don't forget next week's challenge.
go out and uh, take some creative self portraits. Um, I'm planning. I'm thinking of what to do, but you know, I got something fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get James I can just to come up with something I'm just you know boring. I gotta make it <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'll do something. Uh, you also go out, uh, do something, share with us on Open Shadow IG, um, and and let's see what we can come up with for next week. Yeah. Stay blessed, guys. Okay, guys. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, guys, for Thank having you. me. Thanks. Thanks a lot, James. We appreciate it. My pleasure.